you are welcome to the Messiah Revelation Ministry, which is a prophetic ministry. A prophetic ministry is dedicated to mysteries of heaven. And a prophetic ministry is about revelation about the secrets of heaven, the mysteries of heaven. Um, Amos 3.7, the Lord said, He will do nothing except He reveals His secrets to His servants, um, the prophet. And so when you watch a prophetic ministry, uh, it's about revelation about the mysteries of heaven, things that are revealed uh, to the servants of the Most High and the prophetic ministry is a mouthpiece of Elohim. The ministry is to illuminate, the ministry is to expose the secrets of the dark kingdom. The ministry is also to communicate the mysteries of the kingdom of Elohim and those mysteries that should be communicated. Definitely, there are some mysteries that cannot be communicated. They relate to the mysteries of heaven, but the prophetic ministry is to illuminate the word of the Lord. There was a time that I heard a voice shepherdize, shepherdize. And the meaning of the word shepherdize comes from the word a shepherd. Shepherdize means that you must keep the flock to take the right path to enter the waters of salvation. You need to shepherdize. A prophetic ministry is there for shepherdization. The chief shepherd, the Messiah, would shepherdize the children of the Most High into uh, the kingdom of the Most High. A prophetic ministry is there to rebuke is there to warn and is there to judge and you know that the prophets of old um, even judge their words were words of judgment now apostle peter said a word and Ananias and Sapphira, they fell down and died. Remember the prophet who called, he called wild beasts from the bush to devour people. You remember the prophet Elijah called fire from heaven and the two witnesses they will come and they will prophesy and they will also judge at the same time and these are some of the mission activities of a prophetic ministry you cannot call yourself a prophet A prophet is chosen by God. A prophet is inducted into his mission by God. A prophet is commissioned by Elohim. And you cannot call yourself a prophet. Even when people call you a prophet, because the prophets of the Most High are commissioned, inducted. Then the assignments were given to them before the foundations of the earth. And that's why the Lord told our brother Jeremiah, before you were in your mother's womb, I sanctify you, set you apart to plant 
and to destroy. And so the prophet has authority from Elohim. And there was a time I made a video and the, the video was an expose on the church of Mormon, the church of Jesus Christ of later day saints. And somebody was very angry and he asked a question, what authority do you have? The question of authority is very, very important. In the days of John the Baptist, when he was along the banks of River Jordan, the Pharisees sent emissaries to him and asked him a question, what authority do you have to baptize? And even the Messiah himself, they asked him, in whose name do you cast demons? You are a Bessibu. Who, in whose name do you cast demons? Who gave you that authority? They didn't know that the Messiah is the prince of the world. Revelation 7 verse 10 says, Salvation belongs to God and the Lamb of God. They asked him in whose name did he raise Lazarus from death. And so when you engage in a prophetic ministry, sometimes people question your authority. And so that's why uh, this person made a comment, what, who, what authority do you have? And I want to be very clear, my authority to operate this ministry is from the throne of the Most High, Elohim, who sits in heaven. He commissioned me to proclaim the message, end time message, not about prosperity gospel, and so when you're talking about authority, I derive my authority from the throne of heaven, the throne of the Most High. And Paul told his disciples to, he told them to be like the Christians in Berea. You have to go and search the Bible to know whatever is being preached is the truth. And I, I, I will tell you the same thing. First uh, John 4, 3 says that you need to test all spirits to know whether they are from God or not. I know some of you have been with the um, channel Messiah Revelation Ministry for some time. And I know some people also have left the channel that I'm not sure um, why they left. But I challenge you to test every spirit, including the spirit behind this ministry. First John uh, 4 verse 3 is an admonition to test all spirits. But I'm here to tell you that my authority to operate the ministry is authority from the Most High. If you suppress the ministry, you are suppressing the ministry of the Most High for the end times. And the judge of all judges will deal with you at the appropriate time. He is the Avenger in Chief. Um, there are some people who say, don't touch my anointed. And so, who dare you to touch a pastor, a prophet? Who dare you to touch the man and the woman of God? Uh, that is pride. Of course, don't touch my anointing means that 
don't touch my anointed means that the person you are touching uh, is God's anointed. There are a lot of pastors operating. Um, they are anointed by Satan to do the bidding of Satan. And so you, if you touch them, you have attached the anointed of Satan. And in some cases, the Satan will deal with you. I remember a story that um, was told um, a pastor in Canada actually um, exposed the activities of Satan and Satan was angry and he was blind for uh, 14 years and so there are a lot of penalties involved when you expose the dark kingdom uh, you suffer attacks but you need to do that because the prophets of old suffered uh, attacks don't touch my anointed is a mantra that has been used by the false prophets uh, who actually are not prophets of the most high and if they are prophets of the most high they have deviated and so when um td jakes or benahin is talking about prosperity gospel at the hour that we are in and you rebuke him they will say don't touch god's anointed don't touch God's anointed. Don't touch the false prophet because he is a prophet, quote unquote, uh, a prophet of God. There are a lot of prophets who are uh, a prophet who have followed the road of Balaam, the Balaam, the prophet who uh, prophesied for 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 money. Um, on this channel, there are a lot of things that we say, and these are prophetic declarations. And for you to know who a prophet is, you have to go to um, Numbers 12, verse 6. And the Lord said, and he said, Hear. Yeah, now my words if there will be a prophet among you i the lord will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream and so that is the way the lord speaks to his prophets those who he has called and so in a prophetic ministry we are dealing with the revelations of mysteries of heaven mysteries of Elohim and the revelations come in different forms through encounters through visions through dreams and through the revelations and when i say revelations they come even including the books that you read including the sermons that you listen to including videos that you watch and in some cases revelations come to you through uh, confessions and when we're talking about um, encounters um, the prophets in both the Old and the New Testament had divine encounters that are uh, dramatic. Remember when the Messiah, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, appeared to our brother Daniel, there was an earthquake. And the people around our brother Daniel, they fled, they ran away because of the earthquake because the Messiah arrived and the earth had to obey. 
obey the Messiah. And so there was an earthquake. And the scripture in the book of Daniel is very clear that the people who were with the prophet Daniel, they fled, but they heard what was going on. And the Lord revealed himself to the prophet Daniel. And later on, an angel came to Daniel to comfort him and to encourage him. So in a prophetic ministry, there are um, divine encounters. And I've always uh, talked about the encounter I had on Half a Road in Baltimore, where one day in daylight time, as I watched the sun that was shining very brightly, the Messiah appeared from the sun in broad daylight, and that uh, is an encounter. Um, I've, to I've, I've told you about the visions that I've also had, and a lot of videos are done on those visions, and the visions are true. The vision that I had on April the 5th, 2007, when Yeshua, Jesus Christ, and John the Baptist both appeared to me, in a vision and this time it was not a day vision they appeared to me when i was asleep but you have to remember that the day when the messiah appeared to me appeared from the sun i was i was way on the streets on Halford road baltimore day time day time it was an open vision and so the Lord is saying in Numbers 12 verse 6 that if there's a prophet among you, I will, I will speak to him in visions and dreams. And you can also add that he will also appear. Uh, he also appear. In some cases, the Lord appears in clouds and you may see um, unusual clouds because clouds are the means of transportation of the Most High. And so, Revelation 1 verse 7, Apostle John said, Behold, he cometh with the clouds of heaven, and all eyes will see him. Um, as a man of God who is doing uh, the work of God, there are certain decorations that um, you make and they are supposed to come to pass and they will come to pass at the appropriate time. If the revelation is from God, then it has to come because Isaiah 55, 11 says that as snow falls from the sky and gets into the, at the ground, it doesn't go up. So is the word of the Lord that is spoken through his servant. It will accomplish whatever is supposed to accomplish and it will not go empty. And so there are a lot of things that I've said on this channel and you know um, some of the things that I've said in Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 3 is very very important and for the vision is yet for an appointed time but at the end it shall speak and not lie though it tally wait for it because it will surely come it will not tally Habakkuk 2 verse 3 and so there are a lot of things that I've said um, on this channel and they will happen. And some of the things that I've said, um, I know the things that I've said, in the last, in the end time, the richest nation in the world will be an African nation located in West Africa where we used to have, or they used to have the slave coast. 
Habaku 2-3 still stands. The vision will tally, but it will surely come to pass. Uh, some of the mysteries are revealed uh, through human agents. And I remember a lady in Ghana in a church who was possessed by demons, delivered del from the possessions. And I had an interview with her and she confessed some of the secrets in the dark kingdom um, Satan's agents who enter churches, who are wizards and witches, and they form witchcraft camps in the church. And for this lady, she had a baby, and the witches in the church wanted her to sacrifice the baby so that they will eat the baby uh, for um, their sacrifice. When you are a man of God, you are subjected to attack. And many people who come around you are agents of Satan. And I will not forget to tell you a contract that my sibling, somebody who is a son of my father, got a contract for the dark kingdom, a contract of death. And lo and behold, um, she couldn't do his assignment because he was arrested by the angel of Elohim at giving him free accommodation in my house in Baltimore, United States, but he had a contract of death um, to remove me that he was arrested from um, his tracks and he confessed that now I know there is God. I can also tell you a lady that I tried to help, a lady from Nigeria trying to give her a job in my office. Um, she later confessed she's an agent of the marine kingdom uh, the queen of the coast. Most Africans know her by name, Mami Wata. And this lady was an agent of Mami Wata. And when she came to me, her assignment was to uh, destroy me to the point of um, killing. And later on, she did so many foolish things. And so I had to um, terminate her from my office and the last day she left the office she confessed to me that the first day she came to my office she realized she couldn't cope with me of course um, the angels of Elohim protecting me uh, were fighting even though I I didn't know anything that they were fighting uh, for me. And so when you are in a prophetic ministry or in an ministry, ministry serving the Lord, um, the Lord reveals mysteries to you and you have to communicate to the body of the Messiah for them to know the, minis the mysteries. And one of the uh, mysteries of heaven revealed to me was the the mystery of the sounding of the seventh or the final trumpet of heaven as recorded in the book of revelation chapter 11 verse 15 and that revelation came to me in a vision where i was taken to a football field in a village where i went to school in ghana and in that vision night vision i saw somebody behind me and as I turned to look at the person behind me, the person said, you must look for the angel who sounded the seventh trumpet. And so that's why I always talk about the sounding of the seventh uh, trumpet of heaven. When you are doing the work of God, 
and the Lord sends his um, angels to guide you and some of them you will know some of them uh, you wouldn't know they come in the form of human beings and that is normal because Hebrews 1 verse 14 says that angels are sent to people uh, because they are heads of salvation and that's why the scripture is very clear when you meet people particularly those who are strangers you need to be very careful the way you treat them because some of them could be angels of the Lord who come and disguise uh, themselves um, I was going to buy a book um, in Ghana some time ago and uh, somebody came to me trying to show me a book that I should buy and strange enough when I went to um, the shop to buy the book the owner of the shop had stepped outside and the stranger came to me and we were the only two people in in the room and he said to ask me to buy a, um, a particular book it was not the book that I was looking for but he also he said that oh uh, this book is also good you can buy it so I was trying to find out from him why he thought that book was good and he said I was specially sent from heaven to assist you and I was surprised it, it just came from his mouth and so that was his confession um, somewhere in 2006 um, I met a man in, on the streets of Baltimore, um, a black man, you, you would say an African-American, and suddenly we started talking about end times. I don't even know how you suddenly talk about end times with a stranger that you have met for the first time. And throughout the conversation, um, the man was revealing certain things to me. I didn't know who he was. But he said that there's going to be a time that a black person, a black man, will rule the world. And that's when the world will come to an end. Um, this encounter came um, in the city of Baltimore, United States, in 2006. And but lo and behold, 2007, um, a black man came out and campaigned to be a president of the United States 2008 he became president of the United States and now by revelation that has been confirmed and uh, this man Barack Hussein Obama um, is the Antichrist of the book of Revelation chapter uh, 13 and now I'm recall I'm recollecting um, the um, the encounter I had with the strange man on the streets of Baltimore 2006 regarding a black man who, who ruled the world and after that um, the end will come and that's why it's important for you uh, to watch the sermons and the messages that are given to you on the channels and I recommend you to uh, watch the video by Celestia, an African-American lady um, living in New York um, City and I'm leaving the links of the video in the description box number 44 Barack Hussein Obama 44th president of the United States um, is prophesied to uh, be the Antichrist, you will come again. And so, um, in a prophetic ministry, um, revelation also comes to you uh, through other messages by, uh, from other uh, people who uh, are working. And I also have to admit that in some cases, some of the messages come uh, through agents of Satan. And why do I say that? I say that because uh, they do confession. Satan's agents do confession all the time. And in some cases, they'll be talking to you, but they'll be revealing secrets, 
secrets to you and they wouldn't know they'll be revealing secrets to you now i've had that experience where um which is even riches which is from my own family they tell me something that is supposed to be secret but they tell you and later on when you ask them they have forgotten and so in some cases they will deny and so revelation comes from both um, the kingdom of um, god and also from the kingdom uh, of satan um, i have had occasion where uh, a student came to um, uh, to me and he wanted an assistance from me because he was being harassed and he confessed that he was a member of a secret group and they were trying to um, get him I encouraged him to go to church and pray about it he didn't go but later on I found out that he was uh, he was killed he was murdered he was murdered by his roommate and his roommate actually ate his body and the guys from Ghana he was eaten by a roommate who is from Kenya the, 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 the case happened um, in the United States um, and so you it happened actually in Baltimore the city of Baltimore in the United States and the person who died had actually come to me and he had revealed his identity as belonging to a secret group and he, he they, they were looking for him because they feared he would reveal secrets I thought he was a victim but later on by revelation I also knew that he was not a good person and so that's how things come to you and um, when you are um, doing the work of God um, as a prophetic ministry uh, you say certain things and I don't want to say I prophesy I say things um, probably they are prophecy a prophecy is something that has to has to come and so when I see based on my revelation that the richest nation in the end time to be an African nation you can consider that to be uh, a prophecy and uh, there's a distinction between a prophet and a prophecy expert um, a prophet is called by God and he must be commissioned and his assignment should be given to him the prophet knows what his assignment is a prophecy as a prophecy expert is not necessarily a, um, a prophet but somebody who has studied prophecy and he's able to comment about prophecies you'll be commenting on the prophecies of Isaiah Daniel Jeremiah and the rest but he himself is not uh, a prophet and in America there are so many prophecy experts and they actually elevate themselves and when anything happens um, they try to interpret it they try to interpret the Bible and in most cases they are wrong because they are not prophets but they try to pretend they are prophets and now call them false prophets I'll give you several examples Pat Robertson uh, Pat Robertson an American he had a TV station and he pretend he pretended to be a prophet but he, he was not a prophet he died and there was a time he prophesied he prophesied that um, a time will come when Donald Trump will be president of the United States he win the 2020 presidential election 
um, again and after that Israel will be attacked Israel will be attacked and there will be tribulation and there are so many of those uh, prophets who falsely prophesied about Donald Trump being a man of God, Donald Trump being a Cyrus, citing Isaiah chapter 45. And I remember somebody called, um, is it Stone? I've gotten his uh, first name. Um, he's talking about um, Trump being a Cyrus. It's a different to be a prophet, and it's, um, it's also a difference when you are a prophecy and expert. And so you have to know the distinction between the two. Um, the fact that somebody has predicted something and that it has happened, has come to pass, doesn't mean the person um, is a prophet. There was a time I was in a meeting somewhere in Brussels, Belgium, and it was a conference, a seminar, and NATO's experts on the Soviet Union predicted that there will be a coup d'etat in the Soviet Union. It was a prediction, and definitely it came to pass. There was a coup d'etat in the Soviet Union. Long, long, it came to pass. That was not a prophecy. Uh, it was a prediction because the person who was doing the prophecy was NATO's expert, quote unquote, on the Soviet Union. Uh, probably he had an inside information. Um, I know a professor who predicted that apartheid in South Africa will fall within two years' time. And it came to pass. Apartheid fell in two years' time. It was prediction. It was not prophecy. And when we're talking about a prophecy from God, it's very unusual. Uh, those prophecies are mysteries of heaven. And some of these prophecies may look crazy. I'll give you several examples. Your brother Isaiah comes and prophesies a virgin will give birth. And you should call his name Emmanuel. A virgin will give birth to a son. Very weird. The prophecy didn't happen during Isaiah's lifetime. The prophecy came to pass 700 years later. The same prophet Isaiah said that there will be a king. He named the, he named the name of the king Cyrus, that the Cyrus, the king Cyrus, a Gentile king who helped the Israelites, Isaiah 45. And later on, there was a king, a Gentile king who came, and his name was Cyrus, exactly as the prophet Isaiah had predicted 300 years later. The prophet Noah prophesied that the Lord will destroy the world of flood. It had never happened before. 120 years later, a century later, um, it came uh, to pass. It came to pass. Now we are at the time when prophecies are being fulfilled. And there are certain mysteries of heaven that are revealed. And one of the mysteries is the identity um, of the Antichrist, um, Barack Hussein Obama. The Master Voice Prophecy blog has revealed Barack Obama to be uh, the Antichrist spoken of in the book of Revelation. I've done a five-part series on the Antichrist focusing on Barack Hussein Obama and members of this channel, you have watched it. But that is what goes on 
inside a prophetic ministry and the Lord reveals secrets of heaven to his servants the prophet and the Lord has stated in Amos 3 verse 7 that there's nothing that he will do except that he will reveal his secrets secrets to his servants the prophet you have you also have to remember that it's not everything that the prophet knows and if there's a prophet who tells you he knows everything every secret of the of, of the kingdom of God um, I believe that the prophet is a false prophet is a is a liar it's not everything that you know and even though I, I know by revelation that Obama is not an ordinary person he's a supernatural person and he has an unfinished uh, business and he, and he is going to be the Antichrist spoken of in the book of Revelation um, I'm not very concrete on who the false prophet is and I expect that that revelation will come and I hope it will come and if I'm not very sure then I will not um, I, I will not say it um, I've always made the comment that I believe the United States is the Babylon spoken of in the book of Revelation and I I read the conclusion based upon a series of revelations about United States and what you see is different from what most people see and I'll give you an example uh, Donald J Trump I know a lot of Americans worship him, they like him. He will make America great again. But on July 20th, 2018, when I saw Donald J. Trump in a vision, he was signing a secret document called the Rare World Order, which I believe is the New World Order. So Donald Trump signed the secret document. And in the vision I saw him and he appeared to be uh, like a demon. In another vision I saw him he was very tall, rich in the skies. And nobody reached the sky unless the person um, is a supernatural man, has supernatural powers. And I believe he's working for the dark kingdom as many leaders of Babylon America are doing and so when in one day I saw Obama and Trump in the vision and it happened twice the same day I knew the Lord was telling me something about Barack Hussein Obama and Donald J Trump uh, but um, I can deduce that of course, Donald J. Trump is not a saint. He's a man with supernatural powers who signed the satanic real world order in a vision I saw July 20th, 2018. And Barack Hussein Obama is the real antichrist I've spoken of in the book of Revelation. We are talking about what happens in a prophetic ministry and Messiah Revelation Ministry is a prophetic ministry. We are dedicated to end times. The final trumpet of heaven has sounded based upon revelation. And the children of Jacob, Jacob are not guarded, they are still scattered over the world, also by revelation, and I believe that. Um, the people who are called the Negroes, uh, the children of Jacob who are scattered over the world. And based upon a vision where I saw the Messiah, um, when I saw um, the Messiah and John the Baptist um, in a vision, based upon that vision, uh, I know that the, 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 the Messiah and John the Baptist appeared to me both as um, black men, dark skinned men with Negro hair 
and also on October 30th, 20, um, 2007, I saw the prophet Jeremiah in a vision the same day that I saw the scattering of the children of, 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 of Jacob. And these are the African Americans. And the word African Americans was communicated to me in the vision, indicating that the African Americans or the so called Negroes are the real children of God who are scattered over the world. And they are not the only uh, children of God who are scattered over the world. The prophecy book, Isaiah 11 11, tells you that the Messiah will come and he will gather the outcasts of Judah and the scattered um, dispersed of the outcasts of Israel and the dispersed of Judah. Uh, they will be gathered from all the four corners of the earth. It is a prophetic ministry and you risk your salvation when you don't take the messages seriously or when you doubt the messages. You have the right to test all spirits but don't also be deceived because Satan will try to discredit uh, messages and when I watch when I watch um, Master Voice Prophecy uh, she made a statement that oh don't look at me don't, don't look at how I look just listen to the message now I felt very sad because the lady I saw uh, Master Voice Prophecy she is an African American a dark skinned woman and saying things that are very very heavy regarding the world and particularly regarding the destiny of America and some people will not believe what she's saying just because she is a black woman a Negro so you wouldn't believe it believe me in the last days the Negro is going to be used by the by the most high to do a lot of miracles messages will come from them communications will come from them and so if you are racist you will count yourself out and i believe that the lord will also use people from other races um, white yellow whatever to proclaim the message and if you are a black person and you ignore the messages because of the color of their skin then you risk your own salvation and so here we are a channel a Messiah Revelation Ministry and I chose the name Messiah Revelation Ministry because of the revelations that the Lord has given to me and repeating myself I will say that uh, the authority that I have is divine authority you can test it but I'm not here to prove myself to you I'm not here to to make you happy I'm not here to please you uh, I'm here to do the assignment that is given to me and a prophet knows where he will go it's not br bragging about it let me take you to um, the book of Daniel let me take you to the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 12, verse 13. Okay, Daniel 12, verse 13. Uh, chapter 12 is the last chapter of the book of Daniel. And verse 13 is the last verse of the book of Daniel. And here, the Lord had given a lot of vision to our brother Daniel and the angel that gave the vision to Daniel says something to Daniel that I want to read in Daniel 12 verse 13 
but go down the way till the end be for thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of the days go thou your way daniel you go your way daniel till the end be the appointed time for thou shalt rest you will die and you rest and stand in the lot at the end of the days so i i try to look for the meaning lot l-o-t you are lot and it's used to symbolize many things you stand in your lot and it could be a lot of land allocated to you it will mean your assignment given to you it will mean it could mean your inheritance so the angel was telling daniel you've seen so many visions about the end times but this is not the end this is not the time you seal the book and you go and rest you rest you die and the time will come where you will stand in your lot you get your inheritance you will be part of the kingdom of the most high and for those who are doing the work of god you are not doing the work of god in vain and i will take you to revelation chapter 11 verse um verse 18 revelation 11 verse 18 and the nations were angry and thy wrath is come at the time of the death that they should be judged and thou shalt give reward unto thy servants the prophets and to the saints and them that fear thy name small and great and thou should destroy those who destroy the world and that is the end the reward of the prophet will come at the end when the messiah comes including those who are dead those who are alive the reward for the saints the saints of god will also come including those who will be martyred including those who will not be martyred the the reward for those who fear the name of elohim the reward will come and so remember revelation chapter 14 three angels one angel is sent to spread the everlasting gospel for people to accept the message one angel is sent to announce the fall of babylon and the other angel is sent to warn people not to accept the mark of the beast fear the name of god if you fear the name of god then you will abide by his commandments you repent you'll be holy because the lord is holy and you know nothing that is not holy will enter the kingdom of god so you need to be holy you need to repent fearing god fearing the name of god is very 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 important and when you do that it presupposes that you have accepted his message of salvation you have repented of your sins and you have moved away from the laodicean churches the end time churches of lucifer that are factories um, intended to take so many people to hell if you fear the name of the lord you flee from those churches and so this is the ministry of a prophet a prophetic ministry the nature of his calling the things that are revealed to him the prophecies that come from his mouth the challenges that he faces the suppression of his messages suppression of the messages from the ministry of the prophet 
of course, is part of the end time assignment of Lucifer and his agents who are working both online and offline. This is how you understand Messiah Revelation Ministry, a prophetic ministry dedicated to the end times. Thank you for watching this video. And I know by revelation that uh, I will meet you in heaven. I know by revelation I will meet you in heaven. And let's make it to heaven because the earth is not our home. By revelation I will meet you in heaven and I hope to meet you in heaven. And there will be laughing and you will be watching the video from Messiah Revelation Ministry and I hope the Lord will leave some of the videos or the videos so that we will be watching and we will be laughing. We are in the last days. I'm giving you the inside of a prophetic ministry. Messiah Revelation Ministry dedicated to end times. Share the video. I'm leaving the links of the video in the description box and I'm also leaving a link of the video from Messiah um, from Master Voice uh, prophecy blog regarding Barack Hussein Obama the Antichrist of Revelation 13. Thank you.